Galaxies are the building blocks of the universe. They are huge collections of stars, gas, dust, and dark matter that come in different shapes and sizes. Some galaxies are elliptical, like giant balls of stars. Some are irregular, like blobs of gas and dust. And some are spiral, like pinwheels with arms and disks. But how did these galaxies form and change over time? And what can they tell us about the history of the universe and our own place in it? In this video, we will explore these questions and learn about a new research that used different images from the James Webb Space Telescope to study the morphology of galaxies in the early universe. Morphology is the scientific term for the shape and structure of something. By looking at the morphology of galaxies, we can learn a lot about their properties, such as their mass, age, composition, and activity. We will also see how the web images reveal new insights into the formation and evolution of spiral galaxies, which are the most common type of galaxies in the local universe, including our own Milky Way. So, if you are curious about the shape of galaxies and how they changed over time, stay tuned and watch this video till the end. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest videos. Let's start with the basics. What are spiral galaxies and why are they so interesting? Spiral galaxies are galaxies that have a disc-like shape with spiral arms that extend from the center. The center is usually a bright bulge that contains older stars, while the arms and the disc contain younger stars, gas, and dust. They also have a halo of dark matter that surrounds them and holds them together. These kind of galaxies are fascinating because they are very active and diverse. They are constantly forming new stars, especially in their arms and disc. They also have a lot of variety in their shape, size, color, and orientation. Some spiral galaxies are very flat and thin, while others are more puffy and thick. Some have two arms, while others have more or less. Some are blue, while others are red. Some are face-on, while others are edge-on. But how do we find and identify spiral galaxies in the first place? Well, one way is to use telescopes that can capture images of the light that comes from the galaxies. The light that we see from a galaxy depends on two factors, the distance, and the wavelength. The distance is how far away the galaxy is from us, and the wavelength is the type of light that the galaxy emits or reflects. The distance and the wavelength are related by a phenomenon called redshift, which is the stretching of the light waves due to the expansion of the universe. The farther away a galaxy is, the more its light is stretched and shifted to longer wavelengths, such as infrared. The closer a galaxy is, the less its light is stretched and shifted to shorter wavelengths, such as visible or ultraviolet. But finding and identifying spiral galaxies at high redshifts is a very challenging task. But luckily, we have a powerful tool that can help us overcome these challenges and reveal the secrets of the early universe. And that tool is the James Webb Space Telescope. One of the first studies that used the JWST images to study the morphology of galaxies in the early universe was published in 2023 by a team of astronomers from different countries. And it is submitted to the Astrophysical Journal Letters. It used the images from the NIRCAM instrument. The study also used a technique called visual classification, which means that the authors of the paper looked at the images and categorized the galaxies into different types based on their shape and structure. It focused on the galaxies that have a redshift between 0.5 and 4, which means that they are between 5 and 12 billion light years away from us, and we see them as they were between 1 and 9 billion years after the Big Bang. The study also focused on the galaxies that have a stellar mass of at least 1010 solar masses, which means that they are relatively massive and bright galaxies. They analyzed 873 galaxies that met these criteria and visually classified them into different types based on their morphology. The types were spiral, elliptical, irregular, merger, and unclassifiable. The spiral type was further divided into subtypes based on the number of arms and the presence of a bar. The visual classification was done by five independent classifiers who assigned a vote to each galaxy based on their judgment. The votes ranged from zero to five, 
where zero means no spiral features and five means clear spiral features. They found that out of the 873 galaxies, 216 were classified as spiral galaxies with a spiral vote of at least three. This means that about 25% of the galaxies in the sample were spiral galaxies. They also found that the spiral galaxies in the sample had higher star formation rates and larger sizes than the non-spiral galaxies. The average star formation rate of the spiral galaxies was about 30 solar masses per year, while the average star formation rate of the non-spiral galaxies was about 10 solar masses per year. The average size of the spiral galaxies was about 6 kiloparsecs, while the average size of the non-spiral galaxies was about 4 kiloparsecs. The study found that the fraction of spiral galaxies decreased with increasing redshift. The fraction of spiral galaxies was about 48% at Z equal sign 0.75, 28% at Z equal sign 1.5, 15% at Z equal sign 2.25, and 8% at Z equal sign 2.75. These fractions are higher than the fractions observed with the Hubble Space Telescope, which were about 20%, 10%, 5%, and 2%, respectively. This means that the James Webb images revealed more spiral galaxies than the Hubble images, thanks to the Webb's superior sensitivity, resolution, and infrared range. They even detected possible spiral-like features at redshifts higher than three, which is very surprising and exciting. They also found 11 galaxies with a spiral vote of at least three at Z3 out of 113 galaxies in that redshift range. This means that about 10% of the galaxies at Z more than three were spiral galaxies. These galaxies are very distant and ancient, and we see them as they were less than two billion years after the Big Bang. This study is one of the first studies that used the James Webb images to study the morphology of galaxies in the early universe. It is a very impressive and important study, but it is not without limitations and uncertainties. Some of the limitations and uncertainties are the sample size. It analyzed 873 galaxies, which is a relatively small number compared to the millions of galaxies that exist in the universe. This means that the study may not be representative of the whole population of galaxies and may be affected by statistical errors or biases. The visual classification. It used a technique called visual classification, which means that the authors of the paper looked at the images and categorized the galaxies based on their shape and structure. This technique is subjective and depends on the judgment and experience of the classifiers. Different classifiers may have different opinions or criteria for classifying the galaxies and may miss or misidentify some features. This means that the study may not be consistent or accurate in its classification and may be affected by human errors or biases. The physical mechanisms. It observed and described the morphology of the galaxies, but it did not explain the physical mechanisms behind the formation and evolution of the spiral arms and disks. The study did not address the questions of how, why, and when the spiral arms and disks formed, and what factors influenced their shape, size, color, and orientation. This means that the study may not be complete or comprehensive in its understanding of the spiral galaxies, and may leave some gaps or mysteries in the theory. These limitations and uncertainties suggest that there are still many open questions and future directions for this research. With the James Webb, we can expect to see more studies, more discoveries, and more surprises about the morphology of galaxies in the early universe. We can hope to answer some of the open questions and explore some of the future directions that we have mentioned. And we can also anticipate to encounter some new questions and some new directions that we have not imagined. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will try to answer them. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.